Welcome to the International Space Station. I am ESA astronaut Alexander Gerst. Today we're going to talk about Rosetta, ESA's comet-chasing spacecraft, and some of the unique challenges it faces. The Rosetta spacecraft began its journey in March 2004, launched by an Ariane 5G Plus rocket from Europe's spaceport in Peru. Rosetta set off on a 10-year journey to rendezvous with Comet 67P or Churyumov Gerasimenko in 2014. Rosetta aims to unlock important clues about the history of the solar system and whether comets helped to seed Earth with water and perhaps even with the ingredients for life. To reach its target comet, Rosetta has performed a number of gravity assist maneuvers, close flybys of the Earth and Mars to slingshot the spacecraft on the right trajectory deep into space. On its way, Rosetta passed close to two asteroids, 2867 Steens and 21 Lutetia, taking detailed images of these tiny worlds. In July 2011, Rosetta entered into deep space hibernation, which ended when its internal alarm clock went off on January 2014. After waking the 11 scientific instruments on Rosetta and 10 on the small lander called Philae, were turned on and checked. They then began the most difficult phase of the mission, the rendezvous with the comet. As it closed in on the comet, a major braking maneuver was performed to bring Rosetta alongside around the nucleus at walking pace, becoming the first spacecraft ever to do so. Since then, Rosetta has been mapping the nucleus in detail in order to select the landing site for Philae. This will be the first time that landing on a comet has ever been attempted. Comet 67P, or churyumov gerasimenko is a tiny world. Its nucleus of ice, rock, and dust is just four kilometers across. Its low mass means that it has a weak gravitational field, making landing on its surface very challenging. Philae will have to use ice screws and harpoons to prevent it from rebounding back into space after touchdown. A successful landing will depend on what kind of surface Philae lands on, whether it consists of dust or even ice. In this demonstration, we are going to focus on the deployment of Philae onto the comet. The microgravity environment of the space station makes it an ideal place to try out this experiment. All the same, for this to work, we are going to need to use a little imagination. We are going to use an unpowered sphere satellite to represent the nucleus of the comet, which, in reality, is a dirty snowball approximately 4 kilometers across. On our model, the area of the Velcro represents the selected landing site. Rosetta's small lander, Philae, weighs 100 kilograms and is about the size of a small fridge. Philae will take close-up images of the surface and the panorama of its surrounding area. In its onboard laboratory, the lander will investigate what materials make up the comet. This includes drilling into it to get samples from below the surface. An earplug will represent Philae. This is not to scale, but it is smaller and has significantly less mass than a sphere. We are using Velcro to simulate Philae's harpoons and ice screws, and this has been attached to the earplug. For our model of Philae, to successfully land on the comet, it needs to touch down on the chosen site, the other half of the Velcro on the sphere. To see how challenging it will be for Philae to touch down on the comet, let's have a go at the experiment. I'm going to throw Philae slowly towards the comet. For this first demonstration, we have the easiest possible setup. The comet is not rotating or moving relative to me, therefore the landing site is always visible. Of course, in reality it's more complicated than that. From previous observations we know that comets rotate. So 
Now we are going to try to dock Filet onto the Comet again, but this time our Comet is going to be rotating. Now, let's add even more complexity for the last demonstration. As Rosetta will be moving around the comet, it means that the nucleus of the comet will also be moving, or translating relative to the spacecraft. Therefore, this time the comet is rotating and translating. These were tough experiments. When landing on the nucleus of a real comet, there are many challenges that need to be addressed due to the low gravitational pull and the threat of rebounding off the surface, as well as the complex relative motion of the comet and the spacecraft. Phila is expected to last on the surface of the comet for at least a few days, but this is not the end of the Rosetta mission. The spacecraft will continue to fly alongside the comet as it heads towards the inner solar system and make detailed observations as the icy nucleus heats up as it approaches the sun. Okay, so today we saw how difficult it actually is to have a lander dock to a comet. And uh, I had a pretty low success rate here. I'm pretty sure Rosetta can do much better than I and uh, it's gonna be a suspense time uh, challenge ahead. I'm looking forward to that landing and I wish Rosetta all the best from the International Space Station. You can follow the events of Rosetta and Philae's thrilling commentary adventure as they unfold on Facebook and Twitter.